one of the only sim racers there, if not the only one, whereas everyone else did karting. And G. Peters now gets the run, but so too. From the sim, you drive it on the sim, and you go to the real world, and it feels like it's not your first time there. And I think the models on iRacing are amazing, but I think the physics of a set of courses is incredible, and you do get some really good mods. Hi everyone, welcome back to Gear Z, the Sim Racing Podcast. Today we have a special interview that was recorded inside of Silverstone during the British GT. And we're talking about Jude Peters about all his steps from Sim Racing to the Ginator world. For bringing more pro drivers, more real drivers, more Sim Racers, more CEOs, we need your help. And for that, when subscribe the channel here on YouTube, hit the like button, share it to the videos all the time if you want. Of course, you can join us on our audio or on Instagram or LinkedIn. Let's jump on our podcast. Well, Jude, how are you feeling after the first week? First first uh, weekend, it's been uh, here at Silverstone, it's been pretty good. We've just had the first race and um, it didn't go quite as we wanted, but I did manage to claw up a couple of positions so and get some good racecraft practice in, so yeah, it was all good. And now in Silverstone. Yeah, and in Silverstone. And Silverstone a little bit. Yeah. Qualifying was a little bit stressing. Yeah, qualifying was, I had some problems in qualifying with, you know, catching some cars and, but, so we had to start quite far back, but. Just looking to see what we can gain now. Yep. The first question that I always ask is, tell me what sim racing means to you in your own words. So I think I think sim racing is a really good tool. I think when you first start sim racing, I, I think it's more of a game and it's more for a bit of fun. And as you kind of progress, and as you, if you can't move into real cars, you start to see it more as a tool and more of a training ground that you can, you know, practice your racecraft, your techniques, and all those elements that are really useful in the in the real world. Right, that's that's perfect. But I make some digging about you. So I went to your Instagram, I start shaking about you. And you start as a skater, no? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about it. How yeah. we go from skating to sim racing, from sim racing to the real driving. So I started skateboarding probably when I was 10 or so. And I did that for a good few years, like I think three or four years. And um, the main skate park that I went to was, it was huge and it was really great. And they closed it down because um, I think the government closed it down for some reason. I can't remember what, why, but after that, it started to kind of tail off a little bit. And um, I don't really know what got me into cars, to be honest. I think one of my friends was into cars and I started to get more and more into it. And I saw other people had a wheel and pedals and everything. So I got my first wheel and pedals Logitech set up. Logitech? Yeah, Logitech. and clamped it to my desk and started playing Forza and from there it kind of progressed over the next couple of years until finally got iRacing and a set of Corsa and started really getting into the, the sim side of it. That's perfect. But for the people that never hear about your name, they have to remember something. You are 15 years old, you jump on the first time to the car. Yeah. The first race, that proper race that you have is Alton Park. Yeah. Full wet. Yeah. How the sim prepare you to that? So Was you ready? Yeah, I think I think one of the things is that the sim doesn't generally have rain. I mean, iRacing has just recently had rain. And proper rain. Proper rain. Yeah. And it's good. It's, it's definitely good. But um, I don't think it fully prepares you for exactly how that track is going to be in those wet conditions. And um, I think one of the main things with sim racing is whilst it may not prepare you exactly for what you're going to go and do, what it does do is it trains you to be really adaptable to lots of different conditions, different cars, different tracks. And then from that, you can take that to the real world and just adapt quickly to... That's, that's quite interesting because uh, the previous interview is uh, with Philip Kirk, where he says something interesting that sometimes the sim, you, can, you don't want to do too many sim to get used to the sim racing line. So when you come to the to the car, for example, when you go today in Silverstone, did you, did you saw that your racing line was changing or still you, you will use the same racing line that you use on the sim? I think it's basically, it is the same really. Yeah, it, obviously it depends on the car a little bit and the car will change your line. And um, But yeah, on the sim, it's, I mean, the sim is, where, whether it's a sim or whether it's an arcade game, the racing line is generally always going to be the same as what it is in real life. So. Yeah, you see on eSport normally, they always have the same racing yeah. line and they just do the same. Yeah. So I'm expecting with the rain now, change a little bit mm, that way. Yeah. But let's go back to why the, the sim race. So you have the Logitech, you are clapping to the table, but why you want to go from the sim racing to the real world? Where, where did that come? I think um, 
when you start sim racing and you get into it, you obviously start to watch real racing or you watch real racing and that's what got you into it. And I think there's always a bit of a desire to get into a real car if you do start sim racing. And some people will prefer to go down the esports route and that's another route where people, you can go and make good money from going down the really competitive sim racing route. But I think there's a split where some people want to do that and some people want to go into the yeah, real I world. I agree, I agree. And yeah. I've always wanted to go into the real world, the world. and I was lucky enough yeah, to be able to do that. that comfort. It's a lot of sim racers that are comfort yeah. doing just the esports. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. are a little bit, I would say, afraid afraid in some in some way to just It's hard to find budget it's and all that kind of thing. thing. is a budget, mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. And uh, when you enter to the sim racing too, we're really going to have a lot of unexpected difference. Which one was the first that you make? Like, wow, what is this? Uh, but sim was from, from sim to to real track. Um, I think one of the big differences that I was kind of flabbergasted by, I guess, was the fact that it's kind of Goosebumps. yeah, it's like you drive on the real track and it feels the same. It's weird. It's it's a really weird sensation. You go from the sim, you drive it on the sim, and you go to the real world, and it feels like it's not your first time there. Yeah, you, I know what you mean. It's yeah. become that deja vu yeah, that you've yeah. already been doing it and that you know automatic. The only one that I jumped here on UK was uh, Truxton. Mm -hmm. and it's a simple track, but yeah. you, you play from R Factor 2. And if you go from R Factor 2, that is not, okay, it's not uh, laser scanned properly and everything, but you, your mind is already preparing you. On the yeah. back of your mind, you know what's going to happen after mm. the, the first chicane, you know where you need to push a little yeah. bit. So the, I know that feeling and it's quite weird, but if you yeah. say to me, I'm not the only one. <laughs> so, yeah. And in terms of, uh, let's jump in terms of um, sim racing, which sims do you think that prepare you better to come to the real? This is a tricky question because um, I think iRacing has one of the best braking like models out there, but at the same time, I know a lot of other people agree with me on this, that iRacing's physics, they're kind of, they're good, but when you get towards the limit of the grip, they start, they're quite unforgiving. Yes, yeah. And I think Assetto Corsa is probably, it's a really, like, it's great to get into because it's so cheap compared to something like iRacing. And it's, I think it's probably got some of the best I, physics I think out there. The physics is the best, I think and so. And I think the models on iRacing are amazing, but I think the physics of Assetto Corsa is incredible and you do get some really good mods as well for it. Yeah, you need to remember that Assetto Corsa is a community game. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of yeah. the models that are there are made by community. Mm. So we yeah. don't know if the data is correct. I think uh, sometimes they just take it from, they jump from one model to the other one, just yeah. change the outside and that's it, you have a car. But yeah, I agree with you. And uh, it's quite interesting because real drivers say the same thing. So native that uh, Nate that have, is a coach, he say that Assetto Corsa 100% is the best one for training. When it comes to iRacing, he say the same thing. It's great for the racecraft back yeah. this online. Yeah. Sometimes it's something there that the car go, the car or drift or the car go some behavior that will not be normal. And after you cannot yeah, get it. Yeah. As, as soon as you lost it, you get it. And in terms of tire mo management, how you feel with that racing and Assetto Corsa? Specifically, when you look at something like the Porsche Cup, you like you slide and you have to correct it this much, and then tires are gone. And I don't think that's quite right because, well, in these cars, these Genetta, we just slide them about everywhere because that's the fastest way to drive them. And the tires do overheat because they're road tires, but they have a lot more they have a lot more slip to them before they ever start to overheat and start to really drop off. So I think the tire model on iRacing racing is something they definitely need to work on. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not a professional, so I take what you, what, what the real drivers, but according with Anthony Felix, of course, that was on the podcast, he said that tire model is, on our racing yeah. is completely, yeah, <laughs> completely out of the way. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but he said that until now, nobody can do the perfect tire no, model. It's really hard. And now let me ask him about drugs, breaking points and everything. From Oton Park and Silverstone, do you feel that the seam give you the perfect braking areas? You think that you already have, can prepare you already to the area that you need to break? The area that you need to prepare to hit the apex is perfect or you feel that? I think it's almost bang on. So there's, I've got a model of the Ginetta on my sim and that's, it's a quite a good, quite a good model of it. And specifically when we look at something like Silverstone into Stowe, for example, I'm braking a little bit before like the curb starts on the left or around about that sort of area. And you go onto the sim and it's the same place. And it's, it's the same for everywhere. Like, um, any track, any car, it's pretty much exactly the same braking zones as it is in real life as it is on the sim. So I think that's a, a really positive element of the sim and one of the most important 
most useful things you can take from the sim are the breaking points. But you feel that, for example, uh, if you go in Silverstone, you're going to have the same trees. This, or, it's not Silverstone, Silverstone don't have trees, but you understand, you're going to have yeah. the same type of layout that you have on a sim. When you come to the track, you, you already know that going to be there, that post or that pole mm. that's going to yeah. prepare you. So I think, so iRacing, they scan everything around the track, not just on the track. And that's, you, that definitely is noticed. Uh, a set of Corsa, for example, they don't. I don't think they're all scanned, yeah. um, so they might not have all the stuff around the I think track. A lot of them are community. But, community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're all the tr actual track itself is always generally really good, and if there is a g really key feature as part of the track, that is genuine. That is generally there. So, okay. I think that is quite an accurate it's representation good. of it. It's good that you agree on a lot of things mm. that the professional do because you just jump. And if you already have that mentality, it means that you are a step ahead mm. from the people that's coming from the sim and they're still yeah. getting ready for the sim. Because Philip Obkirk shared it with uh, one colleague of him, they went to, I think it was Abu Dhabi, and he was using the sim racing line instead right. of using the perfect line. Yeah. <laughs> and he said to him, look, you, you cannot spend too much time on a sim <laughs> because yeah. you are using the sim racing line. But if you say that you can manage both ways in the perfect way, yeah. it's the perfect one. But a small uh, break just to asking uh, to the people in the house, how can they support you? You are on Instagram? Instagram's good, yeah. Um, I'm mainly on Instagram at the minute for social media. Um, I've, yeah, I'm not, I haven't really started to go to anything else yet. We might, we might do soon, but, but yeah, yeah mainly Mom on Instagram. Mom is on LinkedIn. Yeah. Get connecting everything. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't really use you have much, uh, S2R, S2R. That R. is the family, family business. Yeah, that's the business that um, helps to pay for all the... Yeah, and they are on the Instagram too? Yeah, Instagram. Uh, might be on LinkedIn as well. Okay. Do you already start thinking on doing some stream to help? Yeah, so Logitech have very kindly partnered with us and they've sent over all the streaming gear and all the sim racing gear. So I'm thinking I'm, I'll probably be starting a Twitch account or something and start streaming. So that'll be something to look out for. You know, for. it's going to be art. You know, yeah, we're probably going to have but, 10 yeah. to 20 persons, but yeah. you know, it's just a, a try yeah. as a way to put you outside. Yeah, and absolutely. in terms of the brands that you work, which brands that work with you that we can give a shout? Mm -hmm. So obviously you, <laughs> um, we've got Logitech, uh, Podium, Vbox, um, QS Car Club, they're all of our kind of main partners at the minute, um, mainly, yeah. Uh, with the podium, I want to just ask him, how are we going to work? You're going to be able to go to the sims mm -hmm. there, you can, we can drive anytime you want. Yeah, so we've got, um, we've been given a free subscription to their paddock, so we can go in there and use the sims whenever we, we would like to, and I, c I use that for training in this car, and I find that really useful, obviously, with the motion, and um, it's a very good very realistic sim and we've got the Ginetta set up on there so it's very okay. useful for training. They're going to always be R Factor 2, no? Because they always have the R Factor 2. Yeah, we've got a set of courses set up on there as so well. So you are allowed to you go? Okay, yeah. and that's, that's good. Yeah. In terms of motion, you feel that that motion is quite similar to what you have on your car? So I think the thing with motion is that it's a little bit different in the way it's that... It's tricky. It's tricky, yeah, because I think it's useful in the way that you can kind of feel the car move a little bit yep. beneath you, but you don't get anywhere near of it. Obviously, you don't get anywhere near the same G-forces unless you've got a massive rig setup that I think yep. some companies are starting to do now. But it, I think it is useful to just have that little bit of motion, get that little bit of extra feel um, from the car that you wouldn't normally do on the sim. Podium, you have Motorsport UK. First Motorsport year, UK. Uh, yeah. are we calling Illumina? Alumini? Uh, Futures. Future. Future, okay. First year with Motorsport UK. Yeah. That was a, a big step, no? Yeah, so um, they're really useful for me going along and training with them. I've done one training camp with them so far. Uh, I saw the balloons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a funny, that was yeah, a funny was video. <laughs> um, but we met met some great people, uh, some people that are here in the paddock today. And yeah, um, really useful contacts, great people. And they're really good for training, learning about the fitness side, everything that we you know should be doing to train. And th they've got some sim set up there and they do all kinds of pressure training and that kind of thing to okay. help prepare. Okay, and um, in terms of uh, racecraft, they're going to help you with the racecraft? Um, that's much harder to train, I think. That's one of the things that I think iRacing, just doing lots of races on iRacing is really good to practice for, but it's... Depending on uh, which speed yeah, splits you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because some splits um, can be very, yeah. <laughs> very hard. But I think with the racecraft, that's one of the things that it changes so much from series to series, how you race. And I think it's one of the things that you just need to do races in the real car 
and that really does that helps a lot. I think the sim helps you to a point, and it gets you to a point where you understand all the different types of moves. Okay. And then there's, and then you need to get in the car and get the confidence of you know, leaning on people a little bit and getting lent on, and just having the confidence to get around people and keep, hold your own. And that comes from being in the car, actually racing. Okay, but you always you are a defender that sim racing prepare you 100% to the oh, real. Oh yeah. Okay. I think the sim, for the racecraft side, I think the sim, as I said, it really prepares you for um, all the moves you need to make, all the things you should look out for, all the actual techniques, and then you need to, and then the car will give you, being in the car doing races will give you the confidence, because uh, you don't get the confidence from the sim, because when there's someone sending it up your inside in, in a real car, it might hurt. So yeah. <laughs> there's just a little bit of confidence you need to get, but I think the sim massively prepares you. For yeah, the I think people racing. have to get a little bit awareness, and I think, you are young, probably you don't have that afraid. No, but if yeah. it was me, I would have already some backup. Yeah. I have some I have some drivers that we speak and they say when they was young, probably they would like to put the F1 in a new mm -hmm. ring. Yeah. But now they would be afra afraid. Yeah. So I think that's gonna gonna come and gonna go. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, we already been talking about transition skills and everything. Is anything of that you felt that sim racing was giving you one hundred percent to the real world? Uh, I think like I said earlier, all the breaking points and the lines and that kind of thing, they're all they are all really perfect. So they all prepare you really well. And different actual methods of like, you know, how to use the steering wheel properly, how to use the brakes properly. Uh, that all, the sim is all really good for that, especially with iRacing. I think iRacing is good for so the, the braking. real inputs are quite similar yeah. to what, so if you say, if you're going to bring the memory on this way, you think that's going to be the same way yeah. that you want to? Okay. I think so, yeah. All right. I was, I was, not, I was not expect that. I would expect that probably in terms of inputs, you, st you have to adapt a little bit more. It's all about being, yeah, it's kind of being really smooth with it. That's something that the sim kind of does prepare you for quite well. I think um, one thing that the sim can't really show, I don't, know, I don't know how it could possibly do it, is the kind of slip beneath you, and especially okay. in a car like this where you do slide it a little bit. Okay. Um, it doesn't, I don't know how it would, but there's the kind of slip beneath you, you need to feel and you need to go with it. And that's something that I struggled with at first, because with iRacing, you kind of correct all the little slides that you have. Whereas but it's like we, we speak about that, that yeah. extra slides that yeah. are, yeah. No, are no real and uh, iRacing still Yeah, bring whereas it. in something like this, you kind of go with it and let it happen a little bit. And that's something that I think a good direct drive wheel really does help with. But, um, but yeah, I think... So the Logitech... The new Logitech True Force is helping you a lot. Yeah, the new Logitech wheel that they've sent me is amazing for that. You really do start to feel the slip a little bit more, and it's it's very useful. I, I try it, and I really enjoy the, the Logitech. I think yeah, people good. don't give the especially praise. with the True Force. And the, yeah, the pro the people don't give the praise. It's, but it's like everything. Some people like it, some people don't like yeah. it. Like the pedals, I think pedals is very subjective to what what you like it. In terms of the pedals of Logitech, you've found them good, you've been adapting very well. Yeah, I started using them and I think I think they are really good because um, the load cell obviously is great and um, I think the feel is actually really good because especially in these cars, the first part of travel of the brake is quite soft and then it hardens up. Okay. And I think the Logitech so is quite good for like, like what, 60%? Yeah, it's kind of, once you get to around about yeah, 60, 70%, it gets solid pretty much and then okay. that's... Okay, and how much brake force would be around that? We don't hit very much because you do want to keep it quite light on the brakes generally, okay. but probably only 30, 40 bar, which is probably... Right, it's not, not, not much. 30, it's probably quite similar in kilos, 30 kilos yeah. or so. It's not yeah, very it's much, not but much. It's, it's more so about how you modulate it and how you use it that's where you gain the time. So you you can adjust your scene 100% mm -hmm. to the way. Yeah. And in terms of setups, you feel that the setup that you can put on your real car you can use it on a sim, or is a lot of quirks? It's a hard I think one. to set up a, the car on the sim, I think to set up this car specifically on the sim is there's a couple of little quirks that you need to do to set it up, and that you can't adjust all the exact same things. And especially because right. in real life, it's a fi it's mostly fixed. You can only change some suspension settings. Okay. Um, but we don't really use the sim to try setup changes Just very for much. Just for the training, racing no, yeah. lines, training, okay. And now we're going to talk about the Ginette Academy. Because mm -hmm. for a lot of people, they they are not from UK. They are not so familiar yeah. with Ginette. I think everyone knows Ginette, but nobody understands. Yeah. So you have two, you have rookie and the pros. Yeah. I, I will say on the first. How we, how we work that? There's a big difference on the cars. Cars so, are the same. Yeah, we've always got the juniors, then you've got the GT Academy and then the GT Pro. So the Junior is a completely different car to the other two, yep. it's the G40, um, which is significantly slower. Um, 
and it's great, but it's great for learning how to how the car car handling and all that kind of thing. GT Academy is a G56, um, which is kind of the step up, um, and that's much quicker. I think it's about an extra 200 horsepower or something okay. like that. And they've got uh, semi slicks and wets, whereas we've only got one road tire. Um, so they've got that, and then they have. I don't think they've got any traction or ABS. And then the GT Pro is also the same as the GT Academy, bit more power, traction, ABS. So that's the that's the difference. And that's them. the goal. You want to go step on the next Ginetta, or you want to try something different? I think it's kind of whatever you can do next. Really, I think GT Academy is almost like the Ginetta Juniors for adults. Uh, and then I know that some people have gone into the GT Pro after that. Um, but it's kind of whatever you can get into from there and whatever budget allows and that kind of thing. In terms of budget, how roughly how many you have to spend for being on the Ginetta? So we won the scholarship, of course, yeah. which covers covers the majority of the cost. I'm not sure about the other series, but for me, it probably covers, you know, 70 or 80 percent of it. We it covers most of it apart. It covers everything apart from testing and damage. It's been absolutely invaluable for us. We wouldn't be on the we wouldn't be racing this year if it wasn't for winning that. So, but you you think that um, what's missing for sim racing companies to help more sim sim racers to jump? Yeah. You think is is just monetary, or they yeah. should be creating some types of championship? I think like Skip Barber. Yeah. Do. So I think it's it's really hard for sim companies to help, you know, um, sim racers into the real world. I know okay. Racing Prodigy recently they did competition to take people into radicals and I think that's the sort of thing that needs to start happening more so for me I obviously went from the sim um, straight into the car without you know much practice and I was lucky enough to you know transfer the skills quickly and win the scholarship and that's been brilliant for me and um, but I think yeah, you, there isn't a I huge amount you, of you have, a, you have a raw power that is unique I saw I saw on podium and uh, you know you have against Ben Collins yeah. and uh, I, I joke with you, say, yeah, you need to do two seconds and you go yeah. a little bit more than two seconds. So, you know, the, the talent is there. Eh? But I think in terms of getting sim racers into the real world, there's so many sim racers and it ranges in skill, obviously, massively. But and I think on a sim racing, you, uh, you cannot see the difference yeah. from one to other one. I think yeah, sim, the sim racers, they are, because you train so many hours, the same line that you tend to be, a lot of people tend to be very similar. So, you know, yeah. the difference are uh, yeah. less than tens. Yeah, you've got kind of the top 1%, top half a percent of sim racers. And between all of those people, whether you're in the top 0.001% or in the top 0.5%, it almost, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. it could, you, if you're even, if you're the fastest sim racer in the world, you might not be able to transfer that no. into the real world. You might be top 1% or even slower than that. And then you might be able to transfer that into the real world much better than other people. I and say I think, the, the mentality, yeah, the way, the fear, I think. A lot of people, when they play sim racing, they don't put the fear yeah. and after when to come to the car, yeah. the okay. fear <laughs> kick out. <laughs> yeah, that's the most difficult thing for people, I think, as well. It's it's who to pick to try and take them into the real world. And um, yeah, I think, I don't think there's a huge number of competitions, to be fair, to okay. get people from the sim. I think sim companies aren't running many competitions. So obviously what I won I isn't, isn't a sim thing. I think I was the one of the only sim racers there, if not the only one, whereas everyone else did karting. And that wasn't a sim to real competition, whereas the sim to real competitions, I don't, there's not many of them. And I think there's so many people that enter them, it's really hard to get into that. And I think that's something that's missing. And I think that's something that should happen more. You have now your colleague passing there, Fernandez. Yeah. I've always been uh, working with him. Did he give you a lot of uh, help? Did he give you a lot of tips how yeah. to improve? So he's been great this year because Obviously, he is very, very fast, and he's done all of last season, and he's got, he's a front runner this season. You know, looking looking to be at the front in all the races. So, being able to get tips from him and help from him is it's great. Is no. great, yeah. Yeah. In terms of, I want to ask you now because just for the final, the questions is: How you prepare yourself to a race when you have to come? For example, Autumn Park, second race on the on the Monday, Easter Monday. Yeah. Was it eight o'clock? No, seven or seven yeah, thirty. Yeah, eight thirty or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. How you prepare yourself so early? So I think. Getting up early <laughs> to just be woken up, ready, get something to eat. Uh, not too much, though, obviously. And I think. But is any any type of things that you need to do in uh, in terms of uh, physical? Yeah, you saw me earlier uh, training with Chase, just doing some like um, basically doing catch, like throwing balls between each other, just getting getting ready, kind of getting in the zone. But 
you know, doing some warm ups like that is useful, but obviously there's no time to go out and practice. You just chuck straight into the race. So. Yeah, I was quite surprised to say that you just come one hour early. Mm, I was yeah. I was expecting you guys have to wake up really early yeah. to put your minds. Uh, no, I don't yeah. know for me it would take me two hours to yeah. <laughs> to wake up <laughs> properly. I don't know. But to finish the podcast, I was talking about goals for the future. So one goal is put S to R probably on the right place, and uh, you. You think your family want to bring more sim racers to the to the brand, or just focus on you? So for now, it's just me. But the S 2 R brand is is potentially in the future helping sim racers get into the real world. Once we've kind of helped me get to where I need to be, and we've because at the moment it's quite consuming. But once we've got that kind of working, it's a similar model that you can implement for everyone yeah. else and, and help the, the other sim racers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, and other the road, connections the that there, we're, yeah getting and the the things that we're learning about finding the budget is going to be would be useful for taking other sim races potentially in the future into a real okay. car and you what's your dream i know f1 unfortunately no you know, not f1 actually the dream of everyone but dream for me is wc other kind of like gt world challenge that kind of okay the gt path is my but my you want goal prototypes or gt3s because there's a big difference uh prototypes would be the goal but i think you step out of gts into prototypes almost okay so. yeah yeah, because you have the uh, gentleman drivers, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a way of getting a yeah. seat. You saw a lot of drivers go to gentlemen mm -hmm. and now stay there driving with a, a rich amateur yeah. <laughs> that will put the money on and will help everything. That could be a way. Yeah, yeah, but for sure. Any dream car that you would like it to, to Probably be? Probably a Le Mans hypercar, Le Mans like hypercar, a, yeah. uh, a Porsche hypercar or something. <laughs> that would be, that'd yeah. be cool. All right. And in terms of uh, sim racing, what you, what you want to tell to the people at home where they should focus if they want to transition from sim racing to the real world? I think the main thing is building up your skills, getting okay. to a point where you're, you know, doing well in your races that you're doing on perhaps iRacing racing or a set of course or whatever, and just really getting to be in a point where you feel really comfortable moving between cars. And then from there, it's about if you've got the budget moving into a junior series or however old you are moving into uh, a certain series like Genetis is great. Okay. Um, or if you don't, it's looking for the kind of the routes in like I took, for instance, the Genetis Scholarship or the sim racing challenges that are going on, like Racing Prodigy. They're running ways of getting into a real car. Have you tried Racing Prodigy? Uh, I, I might have entered it. I can't remember now, actually. I think, I, I think, in fact, I think the race to enter it was the weekend of the scholarship, so I couldn't okay. do it. Um, I, yeah, but we can, we can help you with that. But, yeah. Um, but yeah challenges like that are brilliant and that's what you, I think you need to do. I will I will advise you to try Skip Barber. Mm -hmm. So Skip Barber, they uh, they do it on a championship on a racing. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, you jump there and after you need to put your money because you need to pay the travels from here to America and the costs of the hotel and everything yeah. can be around 20K, but you are doing an open wheeler. Yeah. And you have to remember a lot of uh, drivers been there. One of them is uh, Checo. Yeah. So Sergio Perez been been there was one of the drivers from there and after he, he progressed okay for, for Formula One probably with doing to age it's not yeah. like I say it's not one of your dream is endurance but that can open to yeah. I think in terms of IMSA I think it's a little bit better more competitive than WEC mm -hmm. these, these days and uh, you know if you feel it free just try yeah. it yeah right cool Chu, thanks so much for being on the podcast thank you yeah thank you for taking me